Hello guys, good day. This is Anna Free Enforcement Club. Today we're going to talk about Penji or penicillin, the first true antibiotic in history. Now, before the foundation of this first antibiotic, there wasn't an, any effective treatment for infection, for pneumonia, gonorrhea, rheumatic fever, streptococcus bacteria infection, or even a simple cut or scratch, and it turned out into sepsis. There wasn't any treatment for that. Way back in ancient times, during the Egyptian uh, rules, you know, they were able to come up with the practice of putting a, a poultice of moldy bread into the wound. But there was no proven scientific fact that, you know, the, about its effectiveness that it can cure. It wasn't even studied. It wasn't even touched by science. Not until Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin, the first real antibiotic way back in 1928. So Mr. Alexander Fleming is a professor, bacteriologist in St. Mary's Hospital in London. Way back 1928 from his holiday, he put, on, he put on his clothes, getting into the lab, and sorting out his petri dishes of experiments. So this uh, petri dishes, you know, he put colonies of streptococcus bacteria in every petri dish. So this bacteria is responsible for boils, sore throat, even abscess, and sepsis. So he noticed that every petri dish has been invaded by Staphylococcus aureus, except for one. So in that unique chosen one, Petri dish, he noticed that, you know, he put a dot of colonies of Staphylococcus and saved a certain space there where the mold can grow. And he noticed that there wasn't any invasion of Staphylococcus bacteria in that space where the molds have grown. So he called that mold as penicillin notatum or mold juice. The problem is that penicillin notatum has to be purified or separate from other substances in that mold. So that was the problem because penicillin notatum has the capability of killing wide range of harmful bacteria, streptococcus, meningococcus for men meningitis, and diphtheria. Mycobacterium diphtheria, the, the kind of bacteria who is, which is responsible for infecting the mucous membranes of the mouth and throat. So penicillin can kill them, but it has to be purified. Along with this assistance, they try and study to separate the, the penicillin from other substances in the mold, but they failed. Then he published his findings in the British Journal of Experimental Pathology with a reference to penicillin's potential therapeutic benefits. And that was the hook. That publication starts, started to ignite interest in further studies of penicillin. There was even one more studies which was conducted also in Britain but it, it failed when it comes to purifying penicillin. Another wave of penicillin study came up in 1939. That was around 11 years later, from 1928 to 1939. Yeah, in Oxford University. It was conducted by Howard Florey, Ernst Chain, and Sir William Dunn. So they tried to come up with with the different different methods to purify penicillin or Penji. They want to turn out that curiosity into a life-saving drug. Matter of fact is they hired penicillin girls to look after their fermentation vessels. They they actually pay them with uh, with a salary of two pounds per week. You'll never know. There wasn't the inflation wasn't bad, really bad that that time. So they turned the the Oxford University penicillin research into a factory of penicillin. So 
because they 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 were able to come up with the you know the the methods of trying to grow molds with with penicillin on it so they 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 were able to extract huge volume at different methods of purification until Edward Abraham come up with a technique called alumina column chromatography to purify penicillin from other substances. Now, from 1939 to 1941, they finally got a chance to test, to have a clinical test of penicillin or PENG. So they were able to administer it to a 43-year-old policeman named Albert Alexander, the first recipient of Oxford penicillin. So what happened to that policeman is that he got scratch, a scratch at the side of his mouth while pruning roses, and that scratch got infected. The abscess spread into his face, eyes, and lungs. So they injected Penji to him. After a few days, they discovered signs of improvement in his condition. But because of the shortage of the drug, plus the war, that was the start of the war, 1939 to 1942, that's the World War II. So that was way back, yeah. you know, Britain against Germany and all sorts of other countries. So lots of things going on in that year. There was a shortage. They find it difficult to, to, to come up with a huge production and studies plus methods to, to really make Penji more efficient and effe effective for the civilians. So what happened to the Oxford's first penicillin recipient was he actually died. Because they cannot able to continue giving him the, the medication, penicillin, for the entire cycle because of the extreme shortage. Norman Hitley and Howard Florey have decided to really finish the job to make Penji as a physical, effective, efficient product, drug available worldwide. That is revolution in the pharma world. So they've decided to ask help from United States. So they left Britain because UK that time was busy with the in, in the battlefield of World War II. So they asked help and they got they got in touch with the Northern Regional Research Lab in Peoria, Illinois. That's the NRLL. And it turned out that this laboratory, NRLL, is the key contributor of large PENGI, penicillin production. Uh, while, while, while Norman Hitley was busy in the, you know, trying to come up with different studies and methods to, to effectively separate penicillin in the, in the components of that mold and trying to come up with the, with the methods for huge, massive production of penicillin, Howard Florey, went to big pharma you know for to to be able to get their cooperation in in the huge production of this penicillin so squib and Merck, yeah they took the opportunity they they also come up with the challenge of studying it and reproducing it massively so in 1942 the first person to be cured by penicillin was Ann Miller. They were able to effectively and efficiently, with the study, give it to her. So she was infected with the streptococcal uh, bacteria. So she got cured, and that was the, you know, the, the revolution of penicillin. They also help out the, the soldiers of World War II. So it's easy for them to get healed. And in fact, they won the war. The United States. So, from from that discovery, innovation, and huge change that happened, British companies, the big farmers in Britain, cooperated. So Pfizer and GlaxoSmithKline joined 
the, the penicillin innovative production. So in 1945, they were, it was a huge success. 19, in 1945, penicillin is already out in the U.S. market, all over pharmacies. And Howard Foley and Ernst Chain have won a Nobel Prize for inventing a method for large-scale penicillin isolation. Alexander Fleming also got a Nobel Prize for the discovery of penicillin. And in 1946, penicillin became out in the market in the Great Britain, available for its civilians. Now, penicillin saved millions of lives. So that's it for today. What a wonderful story. This is Anne once again, uh, Free Enforcement Club, telling you, you never lose. You either win or learn. Thank you so much for listening to my story about Penji. Thank you.